Okay, step six, we're halfway. Um, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So once again, as you're seeing in the steps, there's a lot of having uh, a belief in a higher power. We refer to that as God most of the time, but again, it's up to you to decide whether that's God for you or you want to call it something else, just as long as it's not you. Um, so um, in doing that, it's just saying that you're ready to have God remove the defects of character, not that it's happening yet, but uh, as you're working through the steps, you are recovering and you're gaining back a life that is a better quality of life, even before you get to the 12th step. So um, with each step, you make progress, but it's important to work your way all the way through the steps eventually. And um, so I asked the question, why do people even do bad things in the first place? When I was looking at this, it's like, well, why didn't God just not have me do these things in the first place? Why did God allow other people to do things to me that they did, which put me in a situation where I was just continuing to practice the same things that were done to me that I'm just doing more of it and so you know that's the life I know why did God allow that to even happen uh, why wasn't I saved somehow before that and again because we all have free will so um, in our free will we can either have that little devil on our shoulders or the little angel we always have both but um, sometimes we only listen to one or mostly li listen to one that the devil is working off survival instincts of just take care of me, don't worry about anybody else. You know, if I uh, do something that takes advantage of somebody else and I gain at their expense, well, you know, it's not my responsibility to take care of them or worry about them. It's my survival instincts you're going to tell me look out for number one. Um, that's being self-serving, that's being self-centered. All the attention and everything is supposed to revolve around me. I am the center of everything like the sun. and that um, the only reason for anyone else to be here is whatever they can do to serve me or whatever I can get from them. That kind of thinking is very self-centered and self-serving. Uh, in the program we have something called self-will run riot, so instead of using my free will to do God's will, I'm just doing my self-will and doing whatever pleases me, entertains me, or makes me feel good in the moment. And I don't worry about the consequences tomorrow or next month or next year. Um, and it's just immature. Like I said, I think you know babies start off with that because it's a survival instinct. They have to make sure that they're getting somebody's attention when they need something or else their needs might not get met. Um, certainly there are babies who are fortunate enough to have parents who um, regularly feed them, change them, check on them, hold them because they just do it on a regular ongoing schedule, always checking on the baby to make sure the baby's needs are met before the baby cries. But um, that's not true for every baby that's born into the world. Many babies are not wanted at all, and they're not cared for well. And if they don't scream and cry, they're not going to get their needs met. That uh, the people who care for them sometimes only do it out of resentment and anger because they want the baby to be quiet, to just shut up and not, not bother them, and that the only way to get this baby to shut up is to fulfill its needs. So um, that is the bad side or the self-centered side of making decisions, and then we have the other side in which we live by values of love, care, respect, and service. So um, again, if you're entirely ready to have God remove these defects of characters of self-centeredness, that they can be replaced by loving, caring, respect, and service to others as new character qualities that you can live by, new values, new spiritual principles that you can live by. And one of the things I like to remind people is that if you're using and you're kind of on this road of you've got the pills and the shots and the things you smoke and the things you drink and you're kind of crawling your way along that road that when you're going through hell don't stop that don't just set up house there and stay there it's like you need to be doing something to get your way out you need to get pointed in the right direction and I did I got pointed in a direction of changing my life to have a better quality of life for me and those who are around me. And the 12-step program guided me towards doing that and helped me to develop a relationship with God that um, I was willing to do God's will as opposed to my will. I was willing to allow God to help remove character defects that I had 
because I wasn't going to do it all on my own without some help from somewhere. So, um, so the road to recovery is resiliency. You have to be resilient enough in order to adapt to um, the negative situations by doing something positive and healthy. And if you don't do that, then you're probably just going to stay on the same path you were. So um, you find yourself in hell and you just set up camp there and build a house, then that's where you are. But you don't have to stay there.